Today, we're going to talk about how to get rid of low back pain very fast. Now, there are several causes of low back pain, but there are two main causes that are the most common. And then I'll, I'll cover the things that are not as common as well. And the first big cause of low back pain is excessive sitting. And did you realize that the average person in the US sits between 10 and 15 hours a day? That's incredible. They're driving, they go to work, they sit there or they're working from home, they're sitting, they're working on their computer, and then they go home and watch TV while they're sitting. And so sitting puts your body into this flex state, okay? Now, the thigh muscles, which are the quadriceps, um, they're drawn upward in a flex state. And the quadriceps main function is a flexor. So it extends the lower leg and the foot, and it also helps flex the femur upward. The other flexor in the lower back is the psoas. And so the quadricep and the psoas muscle, if you're sitting for a long period of time, are gonna shorten. So as soon as you stand up, they're gonna be tight. And that's gonna alter the pelvis, which is then gonna cause compensation to your lower back muscles and put your lower back muscles in a constant state of tightness or contraction. And so when you sit for a long time, you get shortened quadricep muscles, you get weak gluteus muscles, that's your butt muscle. In fact, your butt actually reshapes, it becomes flatter, becomes flabby, it becomes atrophied because of our flexors are too tight and we don't have strong extensors, which are the opposite muscles that counter that, which is the glutes, then your low back has to take up the slack. And that's really where a lot of low back pain comes from. So the best stretch for this is the quadricep stretch. And I recommend doing the standing, okay? So this is what I want you to do. Uh, get a chair, uh, take one hand on the chair with the other hand on, the, on your ankle and bring up your foot into the back part so you're stretching your thigh muscle. Let's start with the right side. And when you do this, you wanna stand erect and you wanna bring your leg as far back as you can. It's gonna be tight and you're gonna hold that position for about 10 seconds, okay? And then you're gonna do the opposite thigh muscle. And when you do this, notice which one is tight, okay? Usually one will be more asymmetrical or more tight than the other. And you wanna do the stretch about five different times with a count of 10. And you're gonna find at the end of the stretch, your lower back pain is gonna have a lot more space. It's gonna counter all this tightness in the lower back. And so the low back muscles will be really nice and relaxed. Okay, so that's the main stretch that you wanna do. Now, of course, um, if you have to sit for a long period of time, you're going to have to spend at least one hour a day getting outside, walking, um, walking on different surfaces, walking outside barefoot in your backyard would be awesome because walking barefoot stimulates the bottom of your foot and it really supports the lower back as compared to doing the opposite where you're, someone's wearing higher heels or they're too elevated. So the closer your foot is to the ground, the more stable. So the best counter to sitting for a long period of time is either um, walking or doing a, a really good stretching program versus an exercise program. You don't need to strengthen muscles. You need to stretch muscles and make sure they're symmetrical. The next most common cause of low back pain is low vitamin D. Okay, So if you're not taking vitamin D and you have low back pain, uh, this might be the thing that's going to just knock out your low back pain really quick. And I would recommend about 30,000 international units of vitamin D. You're going to find that probably within, I don't know, 30 minutes to 60 minutes, your back pain is going to feel much better because a vitamin D deficiency will cause low back pain uh, more than any other cause, really. The next cause is some type of asymmetrical muscle. And what I mean by that is that um, either the front part of your body, whether it's the lower legs or the back legs are too tight. And so there's this asymmetrical thing. So when you walk, you have this constant wear and tear in the joints. Uh, this can happen from, I don't know, playing golf where you're doing this asymmetrical um, activity or even tennis where you're right-handed, that's gonna throw off the entire gait. So for that, you wanna check the flexibility of your joints. So um, you can try to touch your toes or go in an extension mode and try to find out what motion you can't go into. And then you're just gonna work on getting things more symmetrical between flexion, extension, side to side, lateral bending, rotation, and even in your neck. If your mid back is tight or your hunchback or your neck is tight, 
that can actually throw off your back as well. So you want to work on the entire spine because it is connected. Now, one little point about this, if you had an old injury, let's say to your ankle or your foot, uh, let's say you fractured your ankle like I did in college, and it set up this pattern where you're always limping a little bit and you're compensating for the other side, that can later in life cause um, your entire pelvis to be off and cause low back pain. So again, these stretches are very, very important, especially if there's an old injury or a sprained ankle. Okay, if there's a disc problem, there's a really good technique uh, to do on the lower back. And basically what you do is you lay on your back and you wanna press on the front part of your abdomen opposing the lower back. So it would basically be about three inches below the belly button right in the center. If you press in there and you're gonna find a lot of tight muscles. And what you're doing is you're relaxing the muscles that are opposing the lower back. And that many times will get rid of low back pain. So wherever you hurt in the back, press on the front, hold that for a few minutes, and that'll knock out low back pain. Kidney stones can cause low back pain. I've done a lot of videos on this. Um, there's a lot more information to be um, learned about this, but the main key thing with kidney stones is drinking enough fluids. You need at least two and a half liters of fluid a day, and it's very unlikely that you would develop a stone if you did that. And this is for people that are prone to getting kidney stones because kidney stones will cause a lot of lower back pain, but mainly it's in the upper part of your lower back. If the prostate is enlarged, usually because the person's consuming a lot of dairy, that can also refer pain to the lower back. So anyway, if you have urination problems at night, suspect prostate and just cut out dairy and see if that doesn't help your lower back pain. Now, I recently did a video on the prostate you should watch. I will put that in the description as well. All right, if there's a uterus issue, let's say you have a fibroid, or let's say you're going through your menstrual cycle and there's problems in the uterus, that can refer pain right to your lower back. A good remedy for that is calcium lactate if you're menstruating. But if you have a fibroid, there's a whole program on that that I recommend. And instead of getting to the details in this video, I'll just put the video down below in the description. If you have pain in your sacroiliac joints, okay, that's just the, to the left and right side of the lower back, um, suspect ovary. Um, and usually sea kelp is a good remedy to help counter estrogen dominance to help some of these cysts disappear and reduce the swelling in the ovary. And so your SI joint pain or your low back pain can go away pretty quick. So anyway, I just wanted to create this video on lower back pain to give you some quick tips on what you can do. And if you have not seen my video on sciatic pain, I put it up right here. Check that out.